What's up, people? So today we're talking about machines versus free weights versus calisthenics. So I'm not going to tell you which is better. I'm just going to inform you of the pros and the cons of each one, and you can decide for yourself. So we'll start with machines. Now, a lot of people think that I am against machines, and that's not entirely the case. I think some machines are good. Some machines are complete crap, but some machines are good. So the benefits of machines are going to be that you can isolate a muscle more than free weights. Now, not always, but this is often the case. Something like a leg extension or a leg curl, you can really feel the target muscle working. So here I am doing a standing cable pullover to sort of isolate the lats. And with a free weight movement, this wouldn't really be possible. If you're using a dumbbell pullover, you're not really getting a lot of tension at the top of the movement. Furthermore, the range of motion is roughly half of a cable movement. So this is one movement where a cable machine is much more beneficial than free weights. Now, some people will say that a cable machine is not really a machine, it's more free weights. It's sort of a combination. Something like a face pull, one of my favorite movements that everyone should be doing. With free weights, a dumbbell or barbell, this isn't really possible. You can't really do a face pull with dumbbells without it feeling totally different. I would say, generally speaking, machines are going to be safer than free weights, just because you can't really mess them up as easily. Whereas a free weight, lots of stuff could happen that's potentially bad. With a free weight squat or a deadlift or a bench press, stuff could go really bad if you don't know what you're doing. But with machines, it's a lot safer. It's also very easy to do something like a drop set with machines. You just change the pin on the machine and then you keep going. It's very easy, very simple, very convenient. However, there are definitely some drawbacks to machines. One is that for a lot of machines, you can max them out very easily. So there's already a few machines at this gym where I've, I'm using the top weight. And you, know, you can progress by doing more reps or by pausing the reps or doing them more slowly or more explosively or some other form of overload, but at a certain point, you really just want to use more weight. Furthermore, you're not using stabilizers during most machines. I'm doing a machine leg press here, and this is not the same as a squat. It is completely different feeling, even though it's working similar muscles. It's not working a lot of the core muscles, the stabilizers, that a free weight movement would. Furthermore, some machines are just bad. Um, I don't know if you've encountered this, but some machines just are not good. They are just really bad. The mechanics of the movement are just very unnatural feeling. And actually, this is one good way to get hurt. If you are using a free weight, you can move more or less wherever you want. But if you're using a bad machine, it's going to lock you in that bad position, and you can definitely stress the joints and the tendons in a very unnatural way. Furthermore, it's certainly possible to develop muscle imbalances if you use machines, again, because they're not working the stabilizers. Another factor is that they are expensive. If you have a home gym, I would never invest in a machine like this. You're better off getting a barbell, getting dumbbells, getting plates. It also takes up less space. And so if you have a home gym, I would say free weights are a much better investment. Speaking of free weights, the good things about free weights is that you can do a ton of variety. With just a barbell and dumbbells and plates, you can do so many exercises. Dozens, hundreds, maybe even thousands when you add in all the varieties. And so this really gives you a lot of, a lot of different options when it comes to building muscle and getting stronger. Speaking of getting stronger, man, my transitions are on point today. You can overload the weight in a very small adjustment. So basically you can go from 100 kilo bench press to 101 kilo bench press to 102 kilo bench press with micro loading. Another good thing about free weights is that they are difficult to learn. Now some people might say this is a bad thing. I completely disagree. I think you should always go towards the hard things. You shouldn't make the easy choice. Just because you know you can sit down on a leg extension and just extend your knee a bunch of times, that doesn't mean that's the optimal choice. If you learn to squat, to free weight barbell squat, to depth for reps with heavy weight, that is going to be so much more effective in terms of character building, not just in terms of muscle, but in terms of your brain. 
in terms of developing your coordination and your skills and your technique, it's just going to be way more effective than some kind of machine. My point is, if you take someone who can bench press, for example, and you have them do a machine, they're going to crush that machine. It's going to be a piece of cake. But if you have someone go from a machine to a free weight exercise, not necessarily. There are some drawbacks to this. Obviously, it's a more difficult type of movement, and so it's going to take longer to learn. But when you do learn it, it's more effective. So that's not really that bad of a thing. Just because it's more difficult doesn't mean that's necessarily a con. Also, they are potentially dangerous. If you are doing a free weight exercise, stuff could go wrong just because it is a free weight. You can fall over during a squat. You can round your back during a deadlift. You can drop the bar on a bench press. It's just the nature of the exercise. So with greater risk comes greater reward, but you also need to manage that risk. So if you're a total beginner, I would say either get a coach or start very light so you don't injure yourself. For calisthenics, I never really had a lot of experience with calisthenics,、uh, but due to this coronavirus thing, I was out of the gym for exactly three months, where I was doing exclusively body weight exercises. So this is a topic that I have a lot more knowledge about now than I did a few months ago. Due to the opening of this video, you might suspect that I'm not a huge fan of calisthenics.、Uh, I tolerated them. I <laughs> didn't love them, but I got used to them. And they served their purpose. The obvious big pro of calisthenics is going to be you don't need a gym. You can just go to the park. You can use a pull-up bar, some dip bars, that kind of thing. So if you're really short on cash, this might be a better option. I remember when I was broke, <laughs> I would walk to the park and just do a bunch of dips and pull-ups because I couldn't afford a gym membership. Also, they're very convenient. You might not even have to go to the park. You could just do some push-ups or some inverted rows at home. Another benefit is that they do work the quote-unquote core a lot more than free weights. So, if you're doing something like a handstand push-up or a pull-up or an inverted row, this is going to activate your your abs, your lower back, your core a lot more than something like a bench press or a pull-down. I also find that for beginners, this is a really good option. So, if I have someone who's quite weak and they're starting out, do I have them bench press? Probably not. I just, you know, tell them go do some push-ups and get stronger. When you can do thirty, forty, fifty push-ups in a row, then you can start with the bench press. And actually, this is what Arnold Schwarzenegger recommended. Another factor is that I find that they carry over to other lifts. So I haven't really lost very much strength, a little bit, but not too much, especially considering I was out of the gym for three months. Another thing is that they look cool. Now this shouldn't be the most important factor in your training, but there's no denying that something like a handstand push-up, or a forward lever, or a planche, or something, or a muscle up, they look cool. They look really, really cool. A lot cooler than just bench pressing or deadlifting, in my opinion. And if you take someone who can do these body weight movements, they can probably go to the gym and be very, very strong. Whereas if you take someone who has trained with free weights and they try to do these body weight movements, often they are just not very good at them. However, there are a lot of drawbacks with calisthenics that many gymnasts and calisthenic boys they don't really talk about. So the most important one I think is going to be that it is harder to progressively overload. With something like a machine or free weights, it's very easy to progressively overload. You can just slowly add weight. With something like a push-up, it becomes a little bit more difficult. You can modify the movement, you can use harder variations, but it's a little bit more difficult to track and to assess your progress. I also found that there was a lot less variety. If I go to the gym, there are dozens of exercises per movement pattern that I can use.、Um, I even wrote a book on it. There's So much to choose from. With calisthenics, I felt like I was just doing the same five movements over and over and over again. Also, often the core was the limiting factor. So my core would give out before the target muscles, which obviously isn't a good training effect for those muscles that I'm trying to target. Also, let's face it: for the lower body, calisthenics are not that good. 
If you're doing a deadlift or a squat, those are going to be much, much more effective than anything you can do with just body weight, at least for your lower body. Ultimately, it's up to you. You can include all of them. I think all of them have unique benefits, and I will probably include them all in my own training for the future. That's it for today. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.